Tell the congregation to read and study Proverbs 3 5. Trust in the Lord and lean not in your own understanding. Have your dad call me in the morning also, Papa Tony told me. I hung up the phone, glad to have spoken to him, but immediately began rummaging through the files, looking for the muscle magazines I remember Papa Tony telling me he was in. I hoped there would be a few cute, cute girls in bikinis. I found a few, but I also found an article about a man named Craig Culler. In the 1960s and 70s, the church sent local newspapers a picture and an essay about its new converts. Doing so gave the church a sense of legitimacy, and it was free advertising. Above this article, there was a picture of a handsome, bright-eyed, blonde-haired man. He was described as a college dropout who, prior to joining the church in 1969, was a drunkard and marijuana abuser. The last name color struck me. Someone once told me my mom left the church with this man. I made a copy of the document and hid it in a manila file folder. After finding the first article, I continued rummaging through the files. After several days, I had looked through nearly every article regarding every new convert who had joined the church since the 1960s. Some were OCs, or older Christians, I had known since childhood. Others I did not recognize, who were no longer members. One night I opened a file full of birth certificates. I read the names to myself. Each name was one of the children with whom I was reared. They were my friends, the closest people to me, but 99% of them were no longer around. One birth certificate was mine. I had never seen my name on an official document. It never occurred to me that such a document existed. I read through it, noticing an infant footprint in ink on the bottom. My birth date, my father's name, where I was born and where my father was born came next. Under mother, I read an unfamiliar name, Bethany, with the maiden name Shine. In amazement, I stared at the document for a while. I inspected the official state seal. For the first time in my life, I was holding and looking at something that defined and recorded something, something about my own mother, a woman about whom I knew nothing. As I stared at the birth certificate, questions coursed through me. Who is she? Why don't I remember her? Where is she? Where did she leave? Why did she leave? Why didn't she take me with her? Then the realization of what the certificate meant came to me. The document proved who I am and who my parents are. This was my mother, my father, and me together. The union of all of us on a birth certificate seemed like it should be the most normal thing in the world and yet it had eluded me my entire life. This moment reignited the search I had started four years ago, but was thwarted from completing when all of the beatings and upheaval began. But now I was holding an official document with my mother's name printed on it, my real mother who gave birth to me. I placed the birth certificate in the hiding place next to the cash for mowing lawns and the article about Craig Culler. After finding my birth certificate, I searched the files methodically like a detective poring over the details of a case. I did not miss a thing. Within a week, I found an article about Bethany Shine and her conversion to the church. It said she was originally from New York and had moved to California, where she learned of the church. There were hundreds of articles of church members with their pictures stapled to them. This article, like all the others, had a picture stapled to it, except this one was of my mother. With the two children in the photo, that my friend showed me years ago. For the first time in my 16 years of living, I saw a picture of my mother. I was fixated on the photo, taking in every detail, her brown eyes and closed mouth, neither smiling nor frowning, her long flowing brown hair and petite size. I remained like that, studying the photo for quite some time. I decided I had her eyes, her nose, and maybe even her hair. She looked at the camera with a gentle, ambiguous intensity which I interpreted as saying, I'm tired, but I'm happy. I'd never seen anything like it. But her face glowed on the page. I felt a tingle in the back of my head, and I kissed the photo, 
and held it to my cheeks.